Welcome everybody to our final lesson in our first course. Um, I have changed things up a little bit just given the current state of affairs in our world. I wanted to make this um, a little bit more of an open forum. I'm going to give a short presentation um, that just reviews everything that we've gone over and kind of recaps my kind of my story and my plan and then um, I want to just open up the floor because um, over the past week there's been a lot of um, social events that pe people have been putting on and you know in the light of us needing to engage in more social distancing and in that what I have kind of found as kind of a missing piece is an opportunity for people just to talk more openly and more honestly about the the struggles and the fears and the concerns you know we're doing a lot of meetups and game plays and um you know uh social distancing happy hours which are awesome and they're fun and it is good to kind of connect on just a fun social human level um, but given the, the mission and the vision of Afapwa, I wanted to make sure that I provided a platform to, for myself and for every, anybody else who is um, wanting to kind of be a, you know, have a place to kind of share some of their, their concerns in this time um, so we can support each other and lend a listening ear to each other. <clears throat> so, all right, so I just wanted to kind of go back to the very beginning and talk, talk about, again, what our mission is here and what we're doing with Afapwa and why I'm so honored to have the group of people that we do who are members of this community. Um, so. Action for a Peaceful World was born about four years ago as an idea, but it took four years to really bring everything to fruition because I personally had to go through and deal with my own personal struggles with the pain and the suffering that were um, impacting my life. And now that I've reached this place in my life where I understand more deeply kind of the source of my challenges, how, re how closely related those are to the challenges other people are facing in this world. It is you know, my mission to share the skills and the knowledge and the um, inspiration with other people to help them find the path forward in their lives and find the path through the darkness so we can all come out on the other side and live more peaceful, happy, joyous lives. Um, and in, in a way that is still in alignment with the science of behavior and learning and, um, and can true to who I am as a person. So our courses, Cruising with Babs, we are, um, have, we are, have our four courses this year focused on personal development that we're just ending. And then our next course on more professional development will be all about how we, how we are um, cognitively biased, where our brains are processing information and create biases in how we perceive and interpret information as it's coming in and that guides our decisions. And so the, the course is all about how we can be aware of those cognitive biases so we don't allow them, we can defuse from them and, and not allow them to, um, we can use, them, use it to inform our choices but not control our choices. And then the second book is all about behavioral systems analysis, the um, paradox of organizational change because one of the things that I noticed um, in my own practice and in my own life is that um, the, the struggle that I always had with organizations was that I, you know, I saw 
the things that needed to be changed, but didn't necessarily know what steps to take to effectively you know, create change in that environment. And so, um, so behavioral systems analysis was kind of the key for me to understanding where I was going wrong in my approach to kind of addressing my own challenges um, within the professional world, as well as the um, general challenges within the business environment. And then the final book with, for the second course is um, Thrive, which is the facilitator's guide to radically inclusive meetings. And this was another thing that I noticed in my personal and professional life was that many times, um, you know, I, I saw the challenges that were happening and I had my own idea about what needed to be done to change and, you know, positively impact what was happening. But what I didn't do a really good job of because I wasn't, wasn't very skilled in that, um, in that skill set was collaborative problem solving, working together, bringing people together and actually working to create solutions that are going to be effective for everyone. And so this is, these are skills that I think are going to be very valuable to everyone because they are going to help us, you know, see our own cognitive biases, understand the systems in which we are functioning and our role in them and how we can more effectively produce change. And then how we can, um, or, you know, developing skills to more effectively collaborate. So when we do come together and commit to change processes that are in accordance with our values, we're going to be more likely to be successful if everybody's on the same page. We've effectively communicated, we've brought in everybody's opinions and worked together to ensure that the plan is a good contextual fit for everyone involved, not just the person who had the idea originally, which is, again, this is where I feel like I've um, not had as much success in my life because it was not a skill set that I had developed. Um, I hope that this message has come across throughout these courses that my goal is to kind of develop a, a group, a community of Thrive Warriors, which to me really means that we are dedicated as a unit to actively caring for ourselves, actively caring for our families, actively caring for our communities, and doing it with a, a fierceness and a tenacity that will push us through the most trying times in our lives. It is so common and it can be so easy to allow the pain and suffering that is in within our lives to control our actions and to inhibit us from doing the things that need to be done when they need to be done. Um, but when we have a strong set of core values and we have a group of people who are around us who, who share those values and can be our cheerleaders and can um, boost us up and give us the energy that we need to keep moving forward, that is when we have the most likelihood of getting, getting to the good stuff and really um, taking those steps forward in, in a way that is, you know, strong and courageous and powerful and meaningful and is more likely to create long lasting change. Um, the ultimate destination, in my opinion, is humanity. Um, we have, as a global society, um, you know, throughout history, there, have, there has been progress and there have been a lot of leaders in our world who have created a vision for what this world could look like and the, you know, the core things that, you know, what it means to be human and all the things that we can do, um, you know, and all the goals, well, you know, once this is achieved, that, you know, uh, that will be kind of the pen ultimate um, for living, you know, living the good life. Um, but the challenge that I see a lot of times is that 
there's this, you know, there are these goals and there are these ideas and there, you know, there are these grandiose visions, but there's not about the destination, but there's not a roadmap for how we're going to get there. There's no guidance. There's no, um, you know, skill development set. It's like a, you know, a, a wish and a prayer and we've got this on paper and here's where we're going. Here's where we want to go. We really don't know how we're going to get there. And so my you know, thesis is that once people understand, a majority of people understand the foundational concepts of uh, behavioral science and behavior change and how we can um, use, use the information, observable and measurable data to draw conclusions about what is happening and kind of why things are the way they are, we can use that information to guide our decisions and create uh, action plans which are more likely to be effective in the long run. But we're not going to be able to do that without effective dissemination. And so our goal with Action for a Peaceful World and Cruising with Babs and Creating Our Thrive Warriors and all of the content that we are planning to share through our Destination Humanity platform. And then ultimately with the, you know, our long-term goal, which is to create our Alaskan oasis, which you know, we, we vision, uh, envision as this center of excellence where we can, you know, Put, we're putting all of these practices into action that can serve as a model for others to replicate. Um, you know, our goal is to create, create this environment and ensure that people have the skills that they need to move forward in the most positive and productive way possible. Our weekly writing prompt this week um, was, I am a person who is bad at. And I really thought that this was a good, um, the, a good writing prompt to end on because it really flies in the face of what our, how our language constructs can tr have a, con a controlling factor over the actions that we take. And so when I, when I thought about this one, I was really focused on that word bad and how, you know, growing up, we are commonly, you know, either labeled, you know, we label things as that dichotomy. Is it good or is it bad? If it's not good, if it's not good or excellent or skilled, then that means it's bad. And the context and the connotation behind that word is so interconnected and so fused with other um, things within our, within our brains that it creates a judgment. And when we become so fused with these judgments, they become so automatic, it is common that those thoughts will begin to um, can control our actions and what we're doing and deciding. So what I, wanted to kind of share from my perspective is that, you know, I don't think I'm, I wouldn't now, previously in my life, I would say I was bad at this, that, or the other thing. But now my frame of reference is that I'm bad at nothing. Okay. That doesn't mean I'm perfect, but it means that I have re been able to reframe the idea or the, the, um, the word bad in my world, in my world. Okay. Because being the opposite of being good, excellent, or skilled isn't being bad at something. It simply means that you have not been able, you have not yet dedicated the resources necessary to develop those skills to such a point where you would then be regarded as good or skilled or excellent at something. This doesn't mean you're bad. There's nothing wrong with you. That just simply means that the resources have not been dedicated. And that applies to yourself and everybody else in this world. So if you find yourself having those thoughts, having the thought, this person is bad, this is bad, this, that is 
a cue, or hopefully that is starting to become a cue for you to, ooh, let's stop. Let me think about that. Let me be become, come into the moment and get present and really think about what that means. And if I believe that X is bad, how is that impacting my day-to-day -day decisions or my day-to-day -day actions? Okay. So rather than kind of focusing on and um, being fused with the idea of X equals bad, can we defuse those two thoughts? Can we reframe that from, you know, X is not bad, X simply means that the resources have not been yet dedicated to improve upon the current state of being. And when we reframe things in that way, it changes the context in which our thoughts are happening, right? And it changes what we, kind of the um, empowerment level or the motivation, because now, rather than just being okay well it's bad and you know things that are bad can never get better um now we can take action we can do better we can help other people take better uh, take action and we can take action ourselves to create in an environment in which we are continually improving upon what is we're not we're no longer just um kind of dedicated or we're no longer having to live lives where we're just kind of, we have to deal with the bad and just deal with it. Um, there are things that are not great. There are things that could be better. There, that are, there are things that are negative and they impact our lives. Um, but we can either um, just allow that to be there. It is what it is. I'm going to accept it. I'm going to keep, you know, let that passenger on the bus. And, but we're gonna keep moving forward. Um, or we can take action to improve that thing which is impacting us. So as a review, our, our course for, on professional or on personal development, taking action to create more peace in your personal life was intended to be a representation on how we can apply the behavior or the science of behavior to address challenges in our own personal lives. We you know, intensively studied the books, uh, Liberated Mind, Get Out of Your Mind and Into Your Life, and Flip the Script, because these were three texts that I found to be extremely helpful and transformative in my own life in helping me kind of go from this place where I was, you know, constantly feeling, um, you know, defeated and pulled down and self and you know filled with self-doubt to a place where I could actually feel like I was taking action and I was being effective and I was making improved significant improvements in my life. So the live lessons, the hands-on exercises, the reading assignments, I know it was a lot. Um, uh, but I hope that um, through these lessons and through the exercises and through being able to see kind of my model of kind of how, you know, what's going on in my world and how I've processed through some of these things has provided you a guide and an example and um, the inspiration and the motivation and the empowerment and um, to begin to embrace those lessons, begin to practice those skills on a, on a daily basis, to begin living life more in accordance with your values. That is not to say that it is always going to be easy. And I hope that I made that point um, clearly throughout the, throughout the courses, that I struggle all the time. I am a human, just like everyone else. And although I have, you know, I've spent the past three years to, you know, really in the past two years dedicated to working on myself, I had 36 years before that of practicing 
the same habits and the same thought patterns, the same action patterns over and over and over. That's 38 years or 36 years of brain development, of neural pathways being solidified um, through the reinforcement process, neural pathways being weakened through the kind of through that punishment process. Um, but that doesn't mean that we're not capable of change. It is going to be challenging and it is going to be, you know, it's going to be hard and it's, you know, doing this work is going to bring us in contact with, you know, still pain and suffering. But at the end of the day, if everything that we're doing is in alignment with our values, I hope that you see and I hope that you find that at the end of the day, it is worth it. The work that you're doing right now, the actions that you're taking, the struggle that you're going through, the, um, you know, all of the work that you're doing is worth it in the end. And, um, you know, our personal strategic action plans that we've developed kind of as the culmination of this course um, that is intended to be your, a, a, your guiding document, your guiding plan, but it is a, it's always a work in progress as we are always a work in progress. So I hope that you, you can use that, utilize it as your guide, utilize it as a tool to help you stay oriented and stay motivated and stay focused on the bigger picture. So you can keep taking the steps necessary every day to if, to realize your dreams to live your life to its fullest potential to be present in this moment in the moment to be actively engaged to inspire others and to encourage others to keep doing what's necessary to make it through today and get to get to a place where you are able to get get the most um out of every moment of your life and make moments with the people that you love find the blessing in all of the all of the pain because there is a purpose for everything you do have a a life path that is going to bring you a deep sense of peace love and joy so you can live a healthy happy and productive and fulfilling life um, and i hope that the skills that you learn during this course and the and the future courses are going to help just continue to help build those skills up for you um, so you can take more effective action to create peace for yourself, your family, and your community. My story, although throughout my entire life, I felt alone, I felt sad, I felt scared. I felt like I was the only one who was going through the things that I was going through. I felt like I was the only one who was hurting and um, alone. And it felt very, I felt very isolated because I didn't realize that what I was going through wasn't anything different from what anybody else was going through. I was just human, but because of my environment, because of the things that I saw, because of the words that I heard, because all of those things got deeply embedded in my brain and became kind of my conceptualized sense of self, that was the state in which I was living. That I'm, you know, I'm scared, sad, lonely little girl who has, who is completely powerless to change what is, and I am destined to live a life of suffering. And while I might be able to, you know, pull it together long enough to, you know, work hard and get good grades and get a good job, the reality is, is inside, deep down, I'm just a broken person. And I have no other meaning besides, um, you know, the work that I do. Outside of that, I am nothing. I am full of pain and suffering. And that just needs to be numbed away. And so I've shared that story with you guys. I've shared that 
the story of that loneliness and the numbing of the pain and the, you know, using, um, uh, drugs and alcohol and sex and anger and all of these things throughout my life to control that pain and just make it go away and run away as fast as I can. So I, you know, work hard as I can to avoid having to deal with any of the painful, painful things. And when, and then when I'm in a situation where I might have to come in contact with those painful experiences, we numb them out with, um, you know, with bad, bad behavior. Um, things that don't really serve us in the long run. And so, you know, that life of childhood trauma that was, you know, from the outside still looked okay, but in the inside was not the reality. Take the next step into a successful professional career, which on the outside, again, still looked really good, but on the inside, I was, you know, anxious and angry and depressed and still avoid, still, you know, striving to avoid just the pain of living, but not knowing what to do, not having the skills necessary to be able to deal with that. And it wasn't until I was able to connect that childhood trauma with my continual suffering, because in my, like, in my mind, those two things were not linked. It wasn't childhood trauma that I needed to deal with that was leading to continual suffering. It was, I'm a, I'm a, there's something wrong with me. I'm a, you know, there's something deeply inherently wrong. I'm a, you know, I'm an angry, anxious, depressed, scared, sad, lonely person who cries all the time and can't get her shit together. Um, you know, and it's just, you know, I'm just continuing to fake it till I make it. But once I was able to connect those, um, those two pieces and take that step back and view my history through the lens of a behavioral scientist, I was able to see the, the steps that needed to be taken to make those big changes in life, to actually take action more effectively to not only find, but create peace, love, and joy in my life. <clears throat> and again, it's not easy, but it is possible. Change is possible for everyone. The human experience is the human experience. Our brains are our brains, our bodies are our bodies. Um, but we have the power to make the changes necessary to live more healthy, happy, and fulfilling lives. When I made that decision, to move from clinical practice, to move from the successful career and take that big step back so I could really focus on myself and my own healing. I had a vision and it was, you know, at the beginning of my journal, it was in 2016, I had this vision of action for a peaceful world. And I would, you know, I drew pictures and it was, you know, just this, um, this, thing that I knew was, you know, it was going to be something big and it was going to be something important and it was going to have a positive impact on my family and my community. Um, but I didn't really know what it was. It was just kind of this idea. It was just a thought. And, and I took that and that gave me the motivation and the inspiration to just, you know, I'm going to step away from this. I'm going to step away from clinical practice. I'm going to step away from this conceptualized sense of myself and take a chance and do something different and really engage in some self-study and self-reflection and change, um, you know, take action to change my life. But within a year of doing that, within a year of you know, deciding to, you know, pick myself up and take the steps necessary to um, change my life. Within a year, I was so broke and so broken because of the environment in which I had put myself and my family that I was, I was just thrust into a, even a deeper despair that I have ever been in my entire life. 
So much so that I actually contemplated death and how that would be just the ultimate, just relief of all of this. I, you know, no longer do I want to fight. No longer do I want to run or struggle with the pain and suffering that I've had to deal with my whole entire life. Um, no longer do I want to deal with this pain. That, like, that sweet, sweet relief, you know, in, in that moment, in that deepest despair, sounded like the right answer. It's never the right answer. It wasn't the right answer. Um, and it, it was thanks to the encouragement of my husband and that support system. And he didn't know what to do. He just knew that he didn't want to lose his wife to what was going on. And he, but he was the one who encouraged me to just break away and to take it a step even further back, pull in all of the things that I had out there and really start to focus on my own personal journey towards healing. And that was the first step. That was at the beginning of 2018 was the first time that I was able to begin to stand up and speak up and take action and do the things that were necessary to stop hiding from the pain, stop running from the pain, stop avoiding confrontation and just allowing things to continue um, the way that they were. And it was hard. I had to literally like write myself a script and it's like, this is what I'm going to say to this person to make it clear that I am serious and I am not going to back down. And, you know, I was shaking and my voice was shaking, my hands were shaking and my heart was racing and I was crying when I was saying these things, but I had my visual prompt. I was able to do what was necessary for myself to take the steps necessary to get myself out of the situation in which, in which we were found ourselves and um, stand up to the person in my life who had, who had been the source of a lot of my childhood trauma. Um, and, you know, being able to, you know, diffuse from the negative in those moments, remain centered and present, find the lessons in that pain and keep taking the steps forward. It was so hard. It has been so hard. It has been the biggest struggle of my life. But every time, every time that I stand up and take the steps that I need to and, and just continue taking action, even though my physiological responses are, will just, you know, well up where I have this, you know, that fight or flight response, that autonomic response where it's my heart's racing and my chest is tight and my hands are shaking. But I have my values and I am like laser focused on doing what needs to be done to ensure that I'm always living in accordance with those values even if it means disconnecting from old toxic relationships because that is what is necessary for me to do what i need to do to make the most out of my life and live my life in a way that is going to be full and um meaningful and is going to produce the change and for myself and for the community that I am um, destined to serve as a person. So what I would like to do now um, is just open the floor. And I, um, I know that things are really hard right now and I'm like, I'm a little emotional myself and I didn't even really realize because we're so isolated up here in Alaska, I didn't really even, I haven't been thinking about how hard 
things are going to get for a lot of people. And sorry, <laughs> I just found out yesterday that one of my friends' wife's is a, wife is in the hospital um, who has um, tested positive for coronavirus and has a history of um, health issues. And like it is hitting close to home and it's going to hit close to home for a lot of people. And I would just like to open up the floor for people to just share, share what they're going through, share what is working well for them, share what, you know, things that they need support with and um, have time just to have an open, an open and honest discussion and be here for each other. Um, you know, when we, when we start to learn the skills of psychological flexibility, it allows us to weather the storms of life more easily. We can drop the anchor when we need. We can navigate things as smoothly as possible. Again, it's not easy. And um, I will never, <laughs> I would never say that it is. Um, but right now we're all in a situation where, where we're experiencing together this global crisis. And it is a time, it is the time for us to come together, um, you know, talk openly and honestly and not allow the fear to steer us during this time. The only way we're going to make it through is by taking it one day at a time, one step at a time, remaining in alignment with our values and continuing to support each other and encourage each other um, so we can come out on the other side of this stronger 